So let's start with this L'Hopital's rule problem. All right. Um, so here's the problem we have. And really, we can answer the questions below just in the course of trying to solve it. So um, mostly it's just, can you find that limit? So this is what it will look like on a test. I'll just give you that and then ask, what's the limit value? So when we're looking at something like that, the first thing you always do for a limit is you plug in to see if you can get a finite real number. If you do, you're done. Now in this case, what we're plugging in is actually infinity, which isn't a number, but we imagine what would happen if we took it to infinity. So this would give us infinity to the 9 divided by infinity. Interesting, change colors on me there. Okay, so the base would be infinity, but a constant divided by infinity, that goes to 0. So this has the form of infinity to the 0, which is one of the three um, power forms for um, one of the three power forms for the indeterminates. So if we're looking at that, then the next thing that we want to do is evaluate the exponential. So we're going to do the exponential and the natural log. It's really the natural log that we want because the natural log will allow us to pull the power on the 9 over x to the front. But we can't just apply the natural log to that uh, function inside the limit because then we change the answer. Um, so what we'll do instead is we'll apply the natural log and do the exponential at the same time. So we're going to rewrite the limit as x goes to infinity, x to the 9 divided by x. And I do have a significant lag today, it looks like. I think I've got just about everything shut down that I can. Okay, I do have one more thing I could shut down. Okay, um, yes, everything else is shut down. Okay, so then I can rewrite this as e, and I can pull the limit up into the power um, as x is going to infinity. Um, I can pull it into the power. Come on, erase. It's not wanting to respond too well. Let's see if it will respond. Ooh, lag is bad. Okay. So hopefully... For some reason, we, that's fine. I'm just here for good measure. Yeah. Um, okay, there it goes, finally. All right. Let's see if I can get it to cooperate. All right. Ooh, it's really pulling down the power right now. Okay. Hang on, let me see what is pulling up all my power. Close. Okay. We'll see if it keeps going. Um, so, as x goes to infinity, and we're looking at this, what we want to do is apply the natural log. You can pull the limit inside the exponential because e is a constant and it doesn't depend on x. So then we have the natural log of x to the 9 divided by x. So if you have the natural log of x to the 9 divided by x, we can use the natural log properties to pull the 9 divided by x to the front. So doing that next will give us equals, e is still at the bottom, limit, x is still going to infinity. I'll have 9 over x now times the natural log of x. So once you've done that and you've pulled it out of the power, you need to go back and reestablish what form you have because it's going to change. It's not going to be infinity to the zero anymore because you lost your power. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reevaluate by plugging infinity in in place of x. 
So this will give me a different format, which is 9 over infinity times the natural log of infinity. You have to think about the graph natural log. As x goes to infinity, natural log does go to infinity just very slowly. And a constant divided by infinity goes to 0. So we have the form of 0 times infinity. So this is the arithmetic form that you get after you take the natural log. So what we want to do to it now is rewrite it so that we can get it in a fraction form. Right now we have a fraction times something, but not one combined fraction. So I'm going to slide the 9 in front of the natural log and put the x in the denominator. Now it will not cancel with the x inside natural log because that one is buried inside of the natural log. So you cannot cancel anything inside an argument. So this gives me 9 natural log of x over x. And then you should reevaluate the form again to see what you have now. So now we have 9 natural log of infinity over infinity, which basically goes to infinity over infinity. That's one of our two basic forms. So once we have that, we know that we can go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. So we'll apply L'Hopital's rule as the next step. And L'Hopital's rule will lead to taking the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then comparing the ratios. This is because as long as it's differentiable in the numerator and the denominator, they look like lines if you get really, really close. So you can approximate with the line. So this will lead us now to um, derivative of 9 natural log of x would be 9 divided by x, all divided by, and the derivative of x by itself is just 1. And then I would go ahead and plug in infinity again. Dividing by 1 is not going to change it, but 9 over infinity goes to 0. So this is one where I get e to the 0, which becomes just 1. This is the only time you don't get e as part of the value of the limit. Um, if the power on e is 0, you just get the number 1 without an e. Otherwise, you're always going to have the e involved. Okay. And let's see what else we might have out of this section. Looks like Word is using up most of my power. Yeah, um, I knew that there was a lot more to it. Yeah. I just popped infinity into its space and realized anything to the zero power was one, and that answer worked out. Right. But That's right. I so it worked for it. Yep. That's the work for it. Uh, the second one is very like the first one. I think we looked at the third one yesterday, but let's look at the fourth one. I'm not sure if we did that one or not. Um, looking at problem number four, We've got the following. Leave it. So here is our limit. This is x times e to the 5.5x. And again, you will know whether or not to use L'Hopital's if you get an indeterminate form. There are seven of them. If you get any of the seven, you're going to use L'Hopital's. So the only way to know that is to plug in what the limit is approaching, in this case, infinity again. So down here, I'm going to imagine, OK, if I took infinity in place of x, I've got infinity times e to the 5.5 times infinity. But of course, infinity times anything is infinity. And the graph of e to a positive power goes up forever. So this basically leads us to infinity times infinity for the form. Now, when you look at infinity times infinity, there's no disagreement here. They both want to go to positive infinity, which means you're done. It goes to infinity. There's no L'Hopital's because that's not an indeterminate form. 
your seven indeterminate forms look like this. So it's got to be one of these seven. Determinant formed. You have to have zero over zero or infinity over infinity to apply it immediately, or zero times infinity or infinity minus infinity, which you have to get into a fraction form before you can apply L'Hopital's, or one of the three power forms, one to the infinity, zero to the zero, or infinity to the zero. And in this case, we didn't get any one of the three. We got infinity times infinity, which is infinity. So we're done. I mean, there's essentially no work to show, which is kind of crazy. So let's take a look at another one. Um, how about, that was number four. I think we did five yesterday. No. No, I don't think we did. Um, this is a weird problem. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this one. I'm kind of surprised it's in this section, to be honest with you. All right, so this is problem number five, and it's somewhat similar to the last one in that it's going to be just one of these degenerate ones that doesn't actually get you, <laughs> doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So you're supposed to look at the limit um, as x goes to 0. Oh, that's a power. OK. At first, when I saw it online, it looked like x times 9.5 divided by the cosine of x. But I believe that's supposed to be the power on x. I still don't think this one's going to be terribly difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in. If we get a finite real number, we're done. So we have 0 raised to a power, and the power is 9.5 divided by the cosine of 0. Now the cosine of 0 is 1, because cosine gives you the x-coordinate, and on the unit circle, you would be basically out there at 1, 0, so the x value is 1. So the cosine of 0 is 1, so this gives me 0 to the 9.5 power, but 0 to the 9.5 power is still 0. The only indeterminate form is 0 to the 0, which is what I wrote here. But 0 to a constant other than 0, as long as the constant's positive, is just going to be 0. So this one does not involve L'Hopital's rule either. It's just directly calculable. So let's take a look at another one. Now this one is different. This is number six. Six, I don't believe, can be done directly. You will need L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so when I'm looking at this one, it says evaluate the limit. I have a base of 1 plus 5.5 divided by x, all raised to the power 8.5 times x. So in order to do that, I need to get this out of the power. But first, I should plug in the infinity and see if I get one of those power forms. So remember that your indeterminate power forms are one of these three, 1 to the infinity, 0 to the 0, and infinity to the 0. OK, so 2 was 0, 0 to the 0, and infinity to the 0, and then 1 to the infinity is not always 1. OK, so when I plug in 
the value here, I'm going to get 1 plus 5.5 divided by infinity raised to the 8.5 times infinity. Now, 8.5 times infinity is still infinity, but 5.5 is a constant, and when you divide it by infinity, that approaches zero. Now, we're never actually getting there because this is a limit, but we're approaching it. So this approaches 1 to the infinity, which is one of our indeterminate power forms. So to do these, you're going to use the e to the natural log trick. So what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite this as e, and you're going to pull the limit up into the power, and then you're going to take the natural log of the exponential. 1 plus 5.5 divided by x all to the 8.5x power. So this is so that you can get your hands on the power and get it out of the exponent. We have to get it from an exponent form to an arithmetic form. The e to the power is just to undo the natural log because I can't change the problem. So the next step down is going to have the power on the base, the 8.5x, pull to the front and multiply by natural log. That is just one of the properties of natural log. And you should have studied that in college algebra. So the 8.5 times x moves to the front and it gets multiplied by the natural log of 1 plus 5.5 all divided by x. Okay? Now that I've made that change, I need to check my form and make sure that my form did convert to 0 times infinity. So when I plug these in here, I've got 8.5 times infinity. So I'm checking my form again. And then for the natural log, I have the natural log of 1 plus 5.5 over infinity. Now I know that the 5.5 over infinity goes to 0, so that gives me the natural log of 1. But the natural log of 1 is 0. 8.5 times infinity is still infinity, so I get the infinity times 0 arithmetic form. So once I have this, I know I'm on the right track, then I can take the 8.5x and convert this entire thing into a fraction by dividing the natural log by the reciprocal of 8.5x. You never ever move the natural log. I guarantee you if you do, it will get so complicated and so awful and it will not get you anywhere. It'll, just, it'll be a nightmare. So you never touch natural log. You always leave natural log wherever it is. So the next step is to rewrite it and use the arithmetic trick that multiplying by something is the same as dividing by the reciprocal. So I'm rewriting the numerator. And then instead of multiplying by 8.5x, I divide by 1 over 8.5x. And that is equivalent. Now, the next step, of course, is to check the form again. So to check the form, I plug it in again. I know 5.5 over infinity is going to go to 0. So the numerator becomes natural log of 1 again. So all of this applies to this form up here. And this one is going to be to this form here. All right. So I have natural log of 1 in the numerator, 1 over infinity in the denominator, but that does give you 0 over 0, and that's the basic indeterminate form. There are two, 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity, and you can directly apply L'Hopital's rule with either one. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So the next step is to do L'Hopital's rule. And I put the L apostrophe H to let people know that that's what I've done, and that's why these two lines will be equivalent, is through L'Hopital's rule. The limit still has not taken place, so it's still there. Now I have to take the derivative of natural log. 
The derivative of natural log is 1 over u, so the algebra here is really nasty. So I get 1 over 1 plus 5.5 .5 divided by x. That's the reciprocal, or 1 over u. Now I have to do the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to write it in simple um, steps and do them one at a time, just so we don't get lost. In the denominator, I need to do the same thing. I need to take the derivative, but I am going to think of the 1 divided by 8.5 as a constant, and then I'm going to multiply that constant times the derivative of 1 over x. So moving down to the next line. There, I think I can see most of it. Okay. So the next line, I've got to clean up the algebra. So I have e limit, x goes to infinity. The 1 over 1 plus 5.5 .5 divided by x, that's not going to change. So I can leave that alone for now. 1 over 1 plus 5.5 .5 divided by x. The derivative of 1 is 0, so that's gone. The derivative of 5.5 .5 divided by x, you need to think of it as 5.5 x to the negative 1. So that one will become times negative 5.5 over x squared. That's all technically in the numerator of the power on e. And my e is a little high, so I will squish it down a little bit lower. The e should really be way down here, and all of that power should be above it. When I take the derivative of 1 over x in the denominator, I get a negative 1 over x squared. So that will give me a negative 1 over 8.5x squared. <laughs> My e is still too high. So this whole thing represents the power on the e. Now I need to do some algebra to clean this up. This is a very complex fraction. I have fractions within the numerator of the fraction as well as in the denominator. So the first thing that I would probably do is maybe rewrite the numerator with a little bit more eye to placement of the different parts. So in, I'm going to draw a large division sign. Okay, there it is. Um, here's my large division sign. That represents the difference between the numerator and the denominator. And my denominator is negative 1 over 8.5 x squared, which I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. What I want to do is clean up the top. So on the top, I have this fraction 1 plus 5.5 divided by x, which I'm going to place in parentheses, times another fraction, negative 5.5 divided by, I can think of this as x squared over 1. And then what I want to do is distribute that x squared over each of the terms in the denominator of that first fraction. And then I can also multiply the two numerators, the 1 times the negative 5.5. So that will lead to e limit x is going to infinity, and that will give me Here's negative um, 5.5 for the numerator. When I distribute the x squared times 1, I get x squared. When I distribute the x squared times the 5.5 over x, one of the x's will cancel, and I'll get a plus 5.5x. That's from the numerator. Now I can take the denominator, instead of dividing by the fraction, I can undo the trick I did in step one, and I can multiply now by the reciprocal, which is 8.5x squared divided by negative one. Okay. And once I have it in this form, it'll be easier then to um, look at it and figure out how to reduce it. 
If I look at the denominator in the first fraction, I can see I've got a common factor of x. So I'm going to factor that out, and that leaves behind a binomial factor of x plus 5.5. The advantage to writing it in that form is that it now gives me a monomial x here, which I can cancel with one of these monomial x's here. So that x will cancel one of those two. I also have two negatives, and the two negatives will make it end up being positive. So the next line, the limit, x is going to infinity. That will give me, let's see, 5.5 on top times 8.5x, because one of the x is canceled. In the denominator, the monomial x canceled, but I still have x plus 5.5. Now, I can't cancel any of that because the ones in the numerator are monomials, the ones in the denominator are binomials. The only thing that can cancel a binomial is another binomial. So at this point, I need to go ahead and plug in again and see what format I've got now. And when I plug in, I get 5.5 times 8.5 times infinity over infinity plus 5.5. Now, infinity times any positive numbers is still just going to be infinity and infinity plus or minus any number is still infinity. So I still have a basic indeterminate form. So I can do L'Hopital's rule again, which will give me on the next step, I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule again one more time. This should be the last time I need to do it. So I have E limit x is still approaching infinity. When I take the derivative of the numerator, I just end up with the two constants multiplied together because the derivative of x is 1. So this will give me whatever 5.5 times 8.5 is. And in the denominator, when I take the derivative, the derivative of x is 1, but the derivative of the constant is 0, so I just get a 1. So now I actually need to grab my calculator and compute 5.5 times 8.5, because that's not what I'm doing in my head. Um, and I got uh, 46.75, which is 187 over 4. So you can write this as e to the 46 point, I think it was 75 or you could write it as e to the, what was it again, 187 over 4. And that's the power that you should end up with. Okay. And that's the value of the limit. So this was a much more difficult problem, and you did actually have to use L'Hopital's rule. Um, I would say this is a quite difficult problem for a calculus one problem, because you had to do L'Hopital's rule twice, and the value that you got when you took the derivative of natural log involved a pretty complicated chain rule application. So I would call that a really difficult problem. Let's see what else we have. Which one? 5.5 when you do the derivative that didn't disappear? Here? It disappeared from the denominator, but not the numerator. If I had multiplied these out at this point, this would have given me 46.75x, so the derivative would still be 46.75, which is what this is. Okay. Does that make sense? Because yeah. these are not being added, these are being multiplied. These are being added, that's why the derivative of this 5.5 disappears. Okay. okay. So let's see what else we have. 
There aren't a whole lot in this list. I think I did seven yesterday. But I have not done number eight. Number eight looks pretty difficult. So let's look at that one. So on this one, we're looking at um, the limit as x approaches infinity of 16 times x raised to a fractional power. And in the numerator of that power, we have natural log of 3 plus 1, and the denominator is natural log of 5x plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite that larger so we can see it more clearly. So I have the limit x is going to infinity, and my base is 16 times x, but the power on it is also a fraction. And the power is going to be the natural log of 3 plus 1 divided by the natural log of 5x also plus 1, looks like, if I'm reading that correctly. Okay. So when I look at this, the first thing that occurs to me is, ooh, I have a power, and the variable is in the power, and it's in the base. It's probably going to be L'Hopital's rule. But in order to determine that for sure, I need to go ahead and plug infinity in and imagine what would happen if the x values got larger and larger and larger. So if I plug them in, in the base, I would get 16 times infinity, which would eventually, it would be infinity. It would just go 16 times faster. Now, the natural log of 3 plus 1 is just a constant. It's just a number. It's probably irrational, but it's still just a number. So instead of writing it, I'm just going to write C for constant. In the denominator, though, I have the natural log of 5x. Now, the natural log of 5x is still based on the natural log shape, which does this. As the x value goes off to the right, the y value goes up forever and ever. So the natural log of 5x will go to infinity. And then, of course, I'm adding 1 to it. Adding 1 to infinity is like, you know, dropping a dropper of water into the ocean. I mean, are you going to know? <laughs> You're not going to know you did it. Um, so basically, this becomes a constant over infinity. And a constant divided by infinity is going to approach 0, which means that I now have this indeterminate form of infinity to the 0. So it is going to be L'Hopital's. It is one of the three indeterminate power forms. So what I need to do is apply the natural log, and that will let me pull this entire nasty fraction to the front. And then I'll do e raised to that power to undo that natural log. So that's my plan of attack. So coming down to the next line, I'm going to apply natural log and e to a power. So I have e, the limit moves up into the power since e is a constant and doesn't depend on x. And then I've got the natural log of 16x, and it's all raised to this power, which, oh, it's getting me the whole thing. Oh, well, if I'd done that, I would have just pulled the whole thing down. Okay, then. Copy. All right. I can pull this stuff and get rid of it. All right. There it is. Okay, so I have, oops, and I forgot to do the natural log. There it is. So I'm taking the natural log of the original exponential, which is really a tower function because the base has the variable in it and the power has the variable in it. So it's really a tower function. And then I do e to that power to undo the natural log. 
So the next step is to pull that power in that parentheses to the front of the natural log. So I have E limit X is going to infinity. And that's going to pull that entire fraction down to the line. So that will get me the natural log of 3 plus 1 divided by the natural log of 5x plus 1. And I'll probably leave it in parentheses times the natural log of 16x. OK, so now that I have that, I want to recheck the form to see if it converted from this indeterminate infinity to the 0 to the arithmetic 0 times infinity. If it didn't, I've messed up, and I know I need to go back and fix something. So again, when I look at this, natural log of 3 plus 1, that's just a constant. So I'm going to write C. I know that as x goes to infinity, natural log will go to infinity. So the denominator is infinity plus 1 times. And over here, I'm allowing the 16 times infinity inside of natural log. So this is natural log of 16 times infinity. So when I'm looking at that, and it looks like I lost a parentheses on that 5x, because the plus 1 is not in the natural log. The natural log of infinity is infinity. So the next step, this is going to give me times infinity. And a constant divided by infinity is going to go to 0. So I do have the arithmetic form I was looking for. So I'm on the right track. The next thing I need to do is to get it into some kind of fraction form. Now, for the fraction form, you're never going to move the natural log. You want to move the part that came outside that has the variable in it. So some students think you have to move the natural log of 3. You don't because it's a constant. You can leave it in the numerator. It's this part that has the variable x that needs to go to the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite it in this form, e limit x goes to infinity. I'm going to leave the natural log of 3 plus 1 in the numerator multiplied by the natural log of 16x, and then divided by, and I'm going to move this part to the denominator, natural log of 5x closed plus 1. And that one should not be there. There we go. Now, if I'm looking at this, I need to plug in the form again and make sure that I did get one of the two basics, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Remember that natural log of 3 plus 1, that's just a constant. And the natural log of 16, however, is the natural log of infinity. And that's going to go to infinity. So the numerator gives me a constant times infinity, which is just infinity. In the denominator, I have the natural log of 5 times infinity, which is also infinity. plus of 1, which is like no difference. So basically, I have infinity over infinity, which is indeterminate, and it's a basic form. So I know that at this point, I can do L'Hopital's rule directly. So I'm ready to do L'Hopital's rule, which means take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and compare their ratios. And again, you're only allowed to do this because they are differentiable and because it will lead to um, something that's locally linear. Close to that point, it looks like a line. Now let's see if I can get it. I don't think I can. Let's see. Let's select. OK. So I'm going to pull this down so I can see it while I am taking the derivative of it. And then I will erase it in a moment. So I need to do e to the limit. x is going to infinity. And I need the derivative of the numerator. 
natural log of 3 plus 1 is a constant, so it doesn't move because you can always take a constant out of a derivative. So it's going to stay natural log of 3 plus 1. I do have to apply the derivative to this part because it has the variable x in it. So derivative of natural log is 1 over u, so I get 1 over 16x. And then I have to multiply by the arguments derivative, the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 16x is 16. So that gives me the derivative of the numerator. Now I need to take the derivative of the denominator. And the derivative of the denominator, again, I need to take the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over the inside, so I'll get 1 over 5x, then times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 5x is 5, and then the derivative of the plus 1 is just 0. Okay, so now I can remove that, and let's clean up the arithmetic a little bit. I can keep going right here. This gives me e limit, x is going to infinity. I know the 16s will cancel, and the 5s will cancel. And in fact, the 1 over x's will cancel, but that may be too much in one step. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. So I have natural log of 3 plus 1 times 1 over x divided by 1 over x. So again, notice that you've got a common factor between the numerator and the denominator. You have a 1 over x on top, and you have a 1 over x on the bottom, which means they cancel. So since they cancel, then you can rewrite it as just e, looks like it's having trouble switching colors, limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of 3 plus 1. All right, so once you get to this point, what are you going to do? Well, that's a constant, and the limit of a constant is a constant, so this is just e to the natural log of 3 plus 1. Now, the, the remainder of this is also tricky, but it's algebra, but let's go ahead and write it out. So we get e to the natural log of 3 plus 1. When you have a base with powers and there's addition in the power, remember that that comes from having two things multiplied together with the same base, so you added the powers, which means you can also split it up. So this has to be e to the natural log of 3 times e to the first. So let me give it a second to show up. Because when the bases are both e, you would add the powers, and that would give you back the natural log of 3 plus 1. This is an algebraic tri trick to simplify it a little bit more. In the next line, of course, you can use the logarithm and the exponential properties that tell you that if e and natural log are back to back with no constant and no sign between them, they are one to one functions, and they're inverses of each other, so they undo each other. So this finally gives you 3 times e to the first, which is just 3e. So this is a pretty nice problem. Um, it's a little complicated and pretty long, but it has a lot of really nice algebra in it, and it works out pretty nicely. I'm trying to think what else we have. Um, and if we have time, we probably have time to do one more problem. We can look at problem number nine. So we'll go on to a new page. I think I've still got plenty of pages left. All right, so looking at this problem, you have the limit as x goes to infinity of what looks like another tower function because, again, you have the variable x in the base and the variable x is in the power. So we call that a tower function because it's like building on top of itself. For some reason, I always think of the Tower of Babel, like a tower on a tower on a tower. Okay, so when you're looking at this, probably you're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule, but we should plug it in and be sure. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is check the form of it to see what I've got. So plugging in, I've got 12 times infinity in the base in the numerator, and then I've got 12 times infinity plus 8 in the base in the denominator. Now I need to raise that whole thing to the power of 3 times infinity. Now, if I have 12 times infinity, that's still infinity. Um, so this is going to give me interesting. Hmm. So the numerator gives me infinity, and the denominator also gives me infinity. But I have infinity over infinity to the infinity. Now, this is a bit of a problem. That's not really technically one of our indeterminate forms, except for the infinity over infinity part. So this one isn't fully one of the seven forms, except that this base is one of the seven forms. So we're going to have to figure it out probably by doing L'Hopital's rule more than once. This is most similar probably to the one to the infinity if these have roughly the same size. But we're going to approach it using the same tactic we've done before, which is that e to the natural log power um, trick. So I'm going to get that all written on here at the same time. So I've got um, e to the limit. x is going to infinity. And I'm going to apply the natural log to 12x divided by 12x plus 8, all raised to the 3x power. This is so that I can get the 3x down to the line. So if I pull the 3x down to the line in the next step, I'll then want to reevaluate and check my form again and see if it's something that's more doable. So I have 3x times the natural log of 12x over 12x plus 8. I'm losing track of where I'm writing. Okay, so looking at this, we need to reevaluate the form and see if it gave us something that's closer to being what we're expecting for an indeterminate. When I plug in infinity here for x, I get 3 times infinity times the natural log, and then I've got 12 times infinity over 12 times infinity plus 8. Now, 12 times infinity is still infinity, and adding 8 to it does not change that. 3 times infinity is also infinity, so I have um, this over this. However, if you look at this form right here, trying to get my cursor to cooperate. If you look at this form here and you go back to this, you know that if you split this up and did the limit of this individually, the limit of this would be 1, all right? So it's not entirely clear where this is going to go. Um, at the moment, I've got the natural log of infinity over infinity, which would seem to say, I don't know what that says. But if I did this and thought of it as a 1, the natural log of 1 would be 0. So if I thought of that as the natural log of 1, I would get my infinity times 0 form that I'm looking for. So I may have to split this up at some point and evaluate the limits separately, but it does look like it's getting closer to the form I need. So I'll keep going at least till I get to something that definitely won't go. And this is not uncommon. Sometimes you just have to take it on faith that it will eventually work out. So you just keep pushing until you know you've gone off the rails somewhere. So I am now going to rewrite it, and I'm going to move the 3x, and because I never move natural log, and I'm going to divide by its reciprocal. So this will give me natural log of that fraction, 12x divided by 12x plus 8, all divided by the reciprocal of 3x is 1 over 3x. And again, if I were to plug in, I could take the limit of the 12x over 12x plus 8, and that would give me the natural log of 1 again. 
and in the denominator, I would have 1 over 3 times infinity, which is still infinity, and 1 over infinity would give me 0. So it does look like this is leading to a basic form of 0 over 0, which it's taking a while to get it up there. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is just keep going, and I'll apply L'Hopital's rule for the next step. And in the next step, I can take the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator separately. The derivative of natural log is 1 over u. But when the u is a fraction, you can take the reciprocal instead. 1 over is the same as the reciprocal. So that will give me 12x plus 8 divided by 12x. And then moving on to the next part, I need to multiply that by the derivative of the original argument to the natural log, which was 12x divided by 12x plus 8. And then I'm going to divide all of that by the derivative of 1 over 3x. And the derivative of 1 over 3x would be negative 1 over 3x squared from the normal derivative rules. Okay, so keeping that there. And the next step, I'm going to take the derivative of that fraction, the quotient, using the quotient rule. So I have e limit, x is still going to infinity. The first fraction stays the same, 12x plus 8 over 12x. And now I need the quotient rule for the second part. So that's going to be f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So I get a 12x plus 8 times um, f prime would be 12 minus the 12x from the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is also 12, all over the denominator squared. Now, all of that is also over the negative 1 over 3x squared. Now the next step, and of course all of that should be in the power, and really and truthfully my e should be way down here, right? e and this whole thing is the power on e. That e has a habit of creeping up. Okay, so the next step is to clean all that algebra up, which there's a lot of it. So e limit x is going to infinity. I'm just going to clean up the numerator over here, um, maybe with a different color. So let's see, I could use... Um, oh, it's not wanting to let me use another color. Uh, let's try red. Okay, there it goes. Um, let's see if it'll do that. All right, so 12 times 12 would be 144. So I have 144x. 8 times 12 is 96, so I have plus 96. And then minus 144x. So that would cancel out, um, that would cancel out my 144x's. So, I don't know why it has switched colors and stopped giving me the option to change colors, but okay. We'll keep going, I guess, with red, um, since we're almost done anyway. Can't seem to get it all in there at once. All right, so in the numerator, I've got a 12x plus 8 over a 12x. That's from this first fraction. The 144x is canceled, so I have a 96 on top. 
and I have a 12x plus 8 quantity squared in the denominator. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this denominator fraction up by multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's just that same trick in reverse. So I multiply by 3x squared divided by negative 1. Now my next line, I could cancel anything that looks common. I only have one negative, but I do have two, um, I've got more than one factor of 12x plus 8. I've got one in the numerator and two in the denominator, so that cancels one of the two in the denominator. Um, I also have a 3 and a 12 and a 96 and a 12. First, I'm going to take the 12 and put it into 96 because that will give me an 8. So the 12 is gone and the 96 became an 8. And then I can cancel one of the x's. Um, from the x squared, and that will cancel the x in the denominator. So I think I've canceled everything I possibly can. So next step, this would lead to e limit. x is going to infinity, and I've got an 8 and a 3 on top, so that's 24, and an x by itself. And in the denominator, I have a negative, so I'm going to put the negative at the front. And then I also have a 12x plus 8. Now, I could reduce. There is a common factor of 4, um, but I can also just go ahead and evaluate. This also has the form of negative infinity divided by infinity, but that does count as an indeterminate form. And since it counts as an indeterminate form, I can do L'Hopital's rule again. So if I do L'Hopital's rule again, then I get E limit, X is still going to infinity. The derivative of negative 24 would be, or derivative of negative 24X would be negative 24. And the derivative of the 12x plus 8 would be 12, because the derivative of 8 is 0. Then negative 24 divided by 12 would give me negative 2. So my final answer is e to the negative 2, which is a, it's a relatively small number. Okay. All right. And Tori wanted to know something about 4.8 part 1. So we have a little bit of time left. Let's see if we can look at those. We've pretty much exhausted the power forms. So let's look at that last one. Uh, 4.8 part 1, 8 and 9. All right, so, ooh, okay. Yeah, I can see why you didn't like number eight. It's just awful. And nine, okay. All right. So I'm going to play a trick on number eight just to make it a little bit easier so you can see how it's done and not worry about those nasty numbers because web work has thrown up some really awful numbers that I would never use on a test anyway. So let's see if I can get it to go in. Uh-oh, looks like it doesn't want to. Hmm. Ah, and there it went. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Okay, so let me reopen Word. I think Word was getting a little confused. Um, it does happen sometimes. Let's see. Last session. Back to where I left. Okay, so we got our answer there. 
There it is. Okay, so looking at this particular problem, what makes this one so hard are the numbers 9.5 and 8.5. I mean, that's, that's blah. Okay, so that's kind of nasty. Um, I guess we can work with them. So basically, I'm looking at this, and we're trying to imagine what happens when x goes to 0. So first, I'm going to plug in and check out and see what format I've got. So I've got um, the square root of 9.5 minus 0, since 8.5 times 0 is 0, minus the square root of 9.5 plus 0, since 6 times 0 is also 0, all over 0. But that gives me the square root of 9.5 minus itself, so I do have 0 over 0. So it is one of the two basic and determinate forms. So I can go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule directly right now. So what I'm going to do is apply L'Hopital's rule. I don't need the trick that we use with the power forms. So now to apply L'Hopital's, I need to take the derivative separately of the numerator and denominator. Now the numerator is a square root minus a square root. So the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 times the square root, freeze the inside, times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of 9.5 is 0, but the derivative of negative 8.5x is a negative 8.5. That's the derivative of the first term from the numerator. The derivative of the second term from the numerator would have a minus. The derivative of a radical is 1 over 2 to the square root, freeze the inside, and then multiply by the derivative of what was under the radical but not including the radical. The derivative of 9.5 is 0, but the derivative of 6x would be 6. All divided by, now I need to take the derivative of the denominator, which is, yay, very easy. So that just gives me 1. Yay! So now that goes away. Uh, yeah, I know. You get happy for these small things. Okay, so now I need to rewrite this and see what form I get. And if I plug it in again, will I get a number? If I get a number, I'm done. If I don't get a number and get an indeterminate form, I got to redo it again. So I have negative 8.5 over 2 to the square root of 9.5 minus 8.5x minus, well, I could reduce 6 divided by 2 would give me 3 over the square root of 9.5 plus 6x. The next thing I do is plug in the zeros again, and this time I'm going to get a number. It's going to be a nasty, awful number, Tori, but it is a number. Um, so this will give me um, the limit as x goes to 0 of negative 8.5, and I'm plugging in, so I guess I probably shouldn't write the limit, because I am plugging in 0, over 2 square root of 9.5, because 8.5 times 0 is 0, so that one's gone, minus 3 over the square root of 9.5. Now, I could take the negative 8.5 and put that into, divided by 2 and put that into the numerator. I believe that would be negative 4.25, but let's make sure. I can write this as negative 4.25 over the square root of 95, and that will make the two denominators the same. And then I can subtract the 3 and combine them into one fraction. And that will finally give me negative 7.25 divided by the square root of 95. And that's plenty good for an answer. That's more than good enough. And, and I think that's probably roughly what WebWork has. I do want to check it and make sure I divided by, make sure that it agrees with that. Um, looks about right. Did I use a negative somewhere? 
Looks okay. All right. And then the other one you asked about was number nine, I think. Number nine is a little bit harder. Or maybe it's easier. It looks harder at first, although the other one wasn't easy. So you're looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the fifth times the sine of 3.5 divided by x to the fifth. So first you need to plug in and see what format you've got. So I have infinity to the fifth power, which is still infinity, times the sine of 3.5, which is just a constant, divided by infinity to the fifth. So this is the sine of a constant over infinity, but a constant divided by infinity goes to zero. So I have infinity times the sine of zero, but the sine of zero is zero. So I have infinity times zero. So it is one of the fraction forms or is one of the arithmetic forms, we need to get it into a fraction form so we can solve it. So I would probably kind of think what I might do. I don't want to switch sine to the denominator because that would make it cosecant, and I don't think in terms of cosecant. You can't do anything about the argument to sine. It's going to stay exactly what it is. But you could take the reciprocal of the x to the fifth, and move it to the denominator. So I can rewrite this one using that same trick we've used before. I'm going to leave the trig function where it is, but I'm going to divide by the reciprocal of x to the fifth. Instead of multiplying by x to the fifth, I'll divide by the reciprocal 1 over x to the fifth. And now if I check the format, the sine part is still going to go to zero, but the denominator is now one over infinity to the fifth, which is one over infinity. So that does give me zero over zero. So I know it is indeterminate, and I can do L'Hopital's rule now directly. So my next step will be to do L'Hopital's rule. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So I'll have cosine of 3.5 over x to the fifth. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative of x to the fifth. And it looks like this stuff is, whoa, not that much. Okay. And I was just going to move this little bit, but it doesn't want to. It wants to take the whole thing. Okay. So I wonder if I could get it to just, nope, it's going to take the whole thing. All right, so I need to multiply by the derivative of 3.5 over x to the fifth over the derivative of 1 over x to the fifth. So I need to complete L'Hopital's rule by taking those derivatives. And remember, you can think of 1 over x to the fifth as x to the negative 5 and then apply the power rule. So when I take the derivative of this, the negative 5 will come to the front, so I'll get a negative 5 times 3.5x to the negative 6, which will drop it back to the denominator as x to the 6th. And then I still have the cosine, which I moved to the back so that I didn't mistakenly get that other term or factor mixed up inside the argument. So now I've got that at the back. And it's going slow again. Okay, now in the denominator, I need to take the derivative of 1 over x to the 5th, which would be negative 5 over x to the 6th. Okay, so the next step would be to clean up the algebra a little bit. I'm going to take the denominator fraction and multiply by the reciprocal. So this will give me the limit. X is going to infinity. I don't know what happened to the rest of my infinity. Um, and I've got negative 5 
times 3.5 over x to the sixth times the cosine of 3.5 over x to the fifth. And I cannot touch any part of the cosine because that argument is buried inside of it. So I put it in orange brackets to remind you that you can't touch those factors. And then this will be multiplied by um, the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of the denominator is going to be x to the sixth over negative five. And it's going slow again. Okay, so now when I look for things to cancel, I've got a negative 5 on top and a negative 5 on the bottom. So my negative 5s cancel. I have an x to the 6 in the denominator and 1 in the numerator, so they cancel. And that just leaves me with the 3.5 times the cosine. I still have not done the limit. So I have 3.5 cosine of 3.5 over x to the fifth. Now when I plug in infinity, 3.5 over infinity to the fifth, this is going to go to zero on the inside, which is going to make that the cosine of zero. So this becomes 3.5 times the cosine of zero, but the cosine of zero is one, so I should get 3.5, which would be the final answer. So hopefully that helped, and I will post both the video and the notes later today, and, um, and then that way you'll have them. Okay, um, I will see you guys tomorrow, and you'll have a quiz tomorrow, um, and it will probably just be a simpler optimization, and a Lopi-Tells rule. Have a good day.